Hello, welcome to my presentation for AWS Community Days 2020. Um, I'm really looking forward to showing you the project that I've worked on. It involves serverless, and it involves machine learning, and it involves video as well, which is why it's being shown today. A little bit about me. Um, I'm an AWS machine learning hero. Um, and what I do day to day is I put training courses together. I try to help people get certified in AWS. And one of the things I'm focusing on right now is helping people to pass the AWS machine learning specialty certification. So if you're interested in machine learning, and you kind of really should be because it's an awesome subject area, then we'll talk more about the course that I'm making towards the end of this session. And something that not a lot of people know about me, I actually used to work in television. So I actually used to be a technical director at a TV station. I was that person behind the cameras going, camera one, camera two, bring in this satellite feed from wherever. That was what I did. And when I worked in television, one of the things that I began to realize is that I don't like editing video. Now, I don't mind editing my own videos, my holiday videos, or even the videos I put together for my courses. When it's my video, I kind of enjoy that. This video, no doubt, will get somewhat edited, and I'm going to enjoy that process. But editing other people's videos, I found tedious and boring. And that's why I worked in live television, because it was just so much easier. You just press buttons and call out, and things happen. So. What I wanted to do in this project, and what sort of inspired me to do this, was to create a fully automated way to be able to edit videos. So I could just get the raw footage, shove it into a process, and have an edited video come out the other side. Sound too good to be true? Maybe. But I've got an interesting example of doing that right now. So let's take a look at it. A lot of people think that essentially this is the video editing process. And I guess kind of it is. We go and record some footage that could be on our mobile phones or with an entire TV crew with us. We then make the edit. So we sit down in an editing booth and we edit together clips and then we shove it out somewhere so that people can watch it. And these days that tends to be quite often on the internet somewhere. But really, the video editing process is a bit more complicated than just this. It kind of looks like this, where we have lots of steps in between those that we need to fill in as well. So after we've recorded the footage, we also have to get a shot list together. So we have to have to know what we've recorded and which bits of it we're interested in using. And then that shot list goes through to that decision making process. Someone has to decide which of those shots are worth using, which of those shots are going to tell the story that we want to tell. Now, if you're filming something on your mobile phone, um, you're kind of subconsciously doing this. But if you're in a larger organization and there's lots of people milling around, well, that's what those lots of people end up doing. So after we've made those decisions about which clips we want, we can then go and do the editing process. We can grab the clips and essentially glue them together. Then we might have a rendering process. This is actually where the edit gets created into an actual file. Sometimes this happens behind the scenes with the editing software that we're using. Uh, then we might need to do some transcoding because the internet is a big place. There are lots of different kinds of playback platforms all over the place. And we have to transcode the video such that it's going to work with the particular destination that we have in mind. And so there might be some transcoding to do. Then. Finally, we've got our video. We can upload that somewhere. Everybody can watch it. So there's quite a lot of steps to the process of creating a video. And this is the set of steps that I want to take a look at in this brief session. And this is the quite ambitious architecture that I want to put together. I want to be able to record something or have the video provided. Then I want to do some cloudy automation things and Cloud is good at doing automation things, so we should be able to do that. And I want to produce a video. That's it. Put a video in one side, get an edited video out the other. Now, the video that I've chosen uh, to demo this architecture is this one. It's Andy Jassay's 2019 reInvent keynote speech. It's two hours and 40 minutes long, and hopefully, AWS don't mind that I'm doing this. But I'm not going to play it in its entirety. I'm going to get the automated video editing to actually look through this video and edit it for us. So 
what can we use, what service can we use to watch this video for us and basically extract out the contents of the video. Well, there's one of the machine learning artificial intelligence services that we can use, and it's this one. It's Amazon Transcribe. Now, what Amazon Transcribe is going to do is it's going to use natural language processing algorithms that AWS have figured out how to make work to listen to our video, and it's going to transcribe it into a text file. You can see from this snippet here, this is what the output will look like um, at, a, at an API level. We'll pass the video in, and we'll get back a transcript of everything that's in that video. Now, it's two hours and 40 minutes long, like I said, so that's going to be a lot of text all in one big block. And that's kind of useful, but it also passes back this structure. This is every single word that's in that block of text split out into its start time and its end time. Now, this becomes a lot more useful when we're coming to edit the video later on. So now we can see what word is said when. Okay, so we've got the watching of our video down. This is what we're going to use. We're going to use Amazon Transcribe. Next, we need to understand the video. And to understand the video, we're going to use Amazon Comprehend. Now, Amazon Comprehend is another one of these artificial intelligence API-driven services. We can pass in documents, we can pass in sentences, we can pass in individual words, and we'll get back from Crump Comprehend um, some natural language processing intelligence, if you like, about that word. You can see here that we've passed in the word more, and we're being told that it's an adjective. Now, that's a really simple use for Comprehend. Comprehend's capable of doing much more than that. In fact, it's capable of doing things like sentiment analysis. So we could pass in a sentence or a document and get back from it a, a score about its sentiment. Is it positive? Is it neutral? Is it negative? Or is it mixed? So we can get a score out of it. And with more time, I would like to involve more of Comprehend with this architecture. But for now, we're going to use Comprehend in a light way just to look at the uh, type of language of a word. So is it an adjective? Is it a noun? Et cetera, et cetera. I'll show you how we use that in just a moment. So that's how we're going to understand. So we've got watch or listen and understand. Next, we have to move to decide. How are we going to decide how to edit this video together? And the best way to do that, I think, is with Lambda, because we can create a Lambda function, our own function of code, that can make a decision based around some rules that we've got. So we could say, um, I want to edit it with all of these words, or I want to edit these sentence structures out. And in this case, what we're going to do is I'm going to choose the most commonly used adjective that Andy and guests, because there are guests in this video too, that they use, the most commonly used adjective, I'm just going to snip all of those out and shrink it together into a concise adjective-filled video. Not altogether serious, but it could be kind of amusing. And you can see other applications for this technology as well. So we'll take the transcript out, we'll give it to Lambda to make that decision. It can then go and use Comprehend to say, OK, well, I found this really popular word in the video. Is that an adjective? Yes, it is. No, it isn't. If it is, and it's the most commonly used adjective, then we're going to take that, and we're going to create what we call an EDL. Now, the EDL is not an Amazon term. It's not a serverless term or anything like that. It's an edit decision list, and it's kind of something that we use in video editing. Um, we make an edit decision list, which um, is at the choices that we've made of which clips we want to have in our final output. So with this Lambda function, what we've done is we've, we've taken the transcript of the video, we've decided what we want to edit out, and we've made a list of all of the in and out points for that edit that we need to do, which is the edit decision list. So we're getting quite close. We've got to the point now where we know what we want. We now have to edit the video. And this is initially, I'm going to be honest, where I kind of came a bit stuck. I looked at getting an EC2 instance and getting some open source libraries and building up a like a, an instance or even a container that could do some video editing. And that's doable. But remember, I want to have this low maintenance. I don't want to have to look after a container. I don't want to have to look after an EC2 instance image. So I found 
after digging around in the documentation that guess what? Um, AWS Elemental Media Convert can do this. So when I looked at that service when it first came out a few years ago, I thought it was mostly about converting video formats from one thing to another, or, or media files from one format to another. And it does do that, but it can also edit video. Who knew? I didn't know, but I do now, and so do you. You can actually take the edit decision list that we've created um, in, a, in a particular format, and we can pass it into this service, and it will edit the video that it's transcribing, essentially. So we can use a Lambda function to take this text file that we've created, this edit decision list, um, and trigger an Elemental Media Convert conversion job to go and create this file and stick the output ultimately in an S3 bucket. And that will be job done. So we've listened to the video, we've made some, uh, we've understood the video, we've made some decisions, and we finally edited the video, done some transcription, uh, rendered it out, and put it into a, an output bucket. So there's a lot of moving pieces here. There's a lot of services that need to be put together. If we look at them, we're using um, all the favorites. So we're using S3 and Lambda, um, as well as Transcribe and Comprehend and Elemental Media Convert. And all of these need to be somehow coordinated together. Now, there's, there's ways of doing this, and serverless architectures are well known and well understood. And some of the simplest ones are just an event-based chain of events. So we have an S3 bucket. If we put an object into an S3 bucket, for example, a video file, then that can trigger off an event which can in turn trigger off a Lambda function. And so that Lambda function can say, whoa, I've got a video. I now need to pass that into the next step of the process, which in this case is going to be to do a transcribe, to do a, transcri do, to do a transcription job. Now that's fine, that works, but then what comes next? Well, we could take that transcription and we could itself put it into an S3 bucket, have another trigger on that bucket, have another Lambda function. But the trouble now is we're starting to lose the context of what it is we're trying to do. Um, we have more steps that come after this uh, transcribe job, or after comprehend, after the uh, elemental media convert comes next. There's all these little steps that we need to do. We somehow need to maintain state between all of these steps. I've laid enough clues in there as to what we're going to use for this. We're going to use uh, AWS step functions. So step functions allows us to create state machines that maintain state of a running process through services just like this. It puts together Lambda functions into a tree of uh, a definition of how we want to flow and how we want data to flow. It can tap into other services as well. But predominantly here, we're going to be tapping into Lambda functions, which are going to go off and call the services on our behalf. So we're going to maintain the state of the process, um, which some of these things are asynchronous. They take a long time. So transcribe takes a period of time. Um, and elemental media convert also takes a long time. So we want the opportunity to be able to manage this over a long time. And we're going to do that using step functions. So let's jump into the console and have a look at what this actually looks like. We'll take a look at a couple of the Lambda functions, and we'll actually have a go with this and see if it works. Of course it works, otherwise I wouldn't be telling you about this, but let's go and see it working. So here we are inside of the AWS console, and the first place I'm going to jump to is S3. And we're going to take a look at how we're using S3 to, to manage this. Um, now, in here, we should find three buckets. There we go. Um, so we have an input bucket, an output bucket, and we also have this bucket here, which is a clip lists bucket. This is essentially where the edit decision list gets stored. So we've got sort of three buckets ready to go. Now, the input bucket has an event configured on it so that when Whenever anybody puts a video in, or an object, or a video into this folder, it will trigger a Lambda function. Now, let's go and have a look at the Lambda functions that we've got. And we've got quite a few, actually. Um, but the one we're going to look at in particular here is going to be this one here, the Auto Video Trigger Step. So when we place the object inside of the S3 bucket, it triggers off this Lambda function. This Lambda function is going to go and call a step function. 
all it does is take from the input the bucket um, and the key, in other words, the actual object name, if you like, inside of the bucket that got placed there. So this is the video file. Um, it then constructs together this sort of input uh, structure here so that we can pass it into the step functions. Um, and then we call step functions and we pass that input object in. So essentially, all this is doing is translating the fact that someone's put an object into an S3 bucket and triggering off some step functions. So let's go and have a look at step functions. Um, here we are. So um, step functions as a service has inside of it state machines. It's an awkward terminology. And if I get it wrong, then just forgive me. But inside of step functions, we have this state machine, which I've set up. Um, and you'll recognize it if we have a look at the definition of it. You'll recognize it from the slide we looked at just a moment ago. Um, so you can see here the, uh, the, the, the flow through the step function, so or the state machine. Uh, so it comes in, um, and it, what it does first of all. So you remember we we place an object into a bucket. The lambda function has then called this. We then go and call the transcribe function, and the transcribe function is going to send the video to the transcribe service to get the transcription. Now that is an asynchronous call, and it takes a while. So we enter into this wait loop here, which is a mixture of how state state machines work and also a lambda function function which will every every time it's called check to see if that transcription job has finished eventually when it has finished we'll pass the transcription onto clipword and clipword is a lambda function if we just take a look at this now clipword is a function which will find the most used uh, uh, adjective. This is what we were talking about before. So we shall actually take the transcription um, and it will then look through it, getting all of the unique words and counting all of the unique words. Once it's done that, it will then order the list of unique words by the, m the most used word which is actually probably a full stop or the, the word a ah, or something like that, a. Um, but it will take that list once it's found that list and start to pass it through to comprehend. So you'll see here, we're actually calling the comprehend API and we're saying, uh, is this an adjective? And if it's not, then we'll carry on until we hit something that is an adjective. And then as soon as we found that, we'll stop because we don't want to classify every single word in the video. And as soon as we found that, then we found the most commonly used adjective. So coming back to our step functions, that's then going to pass it into edit list, which is going to create our edit decision list. And um, the only thing that that has to do really is take those timings for those words and convert it into seconds and frames or minutes well, actually hours, minutes, seconds, and frames rather than hundredths of seconds because we're dealing with media files. We need to deal with frames, not hundredths of a second. And then once we've got that, we then go to the media convert lambda function, which will take that edit decision list um, and take the original file name, the original object name that was passed in right back at the very beginning with the state that's been maintained inside of our state machine and pass it into elemental media convert to say, please, edit this file for us. And then Elemental Media Convert will deliver the file into our output bucket. So let's go to our input bucket for one second. Now, rather than make you sit through me uploading something um, into the bucket, which happens to be in Virginia, um, what I'm going to do is I've got an object already in here called Keynote 2019-3. So this is the same video that we were talking about before. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and rename that. This is a really uh, useful little trick if you're testing stuff like this. If I rename this file, it appears to the bucket to be a new object, and it will still trigger um, that flow that we've just looked at. So if I go to here, Actions, and I have a look through here, we've got, uh, where is it, Rename Object. So I'm just going to um, actually increment that number. So let's go to uh, Keynote 2019-4. I hit Save Changes on that. Um, then we should be able to go over and have a look at our state machine, uh, step functions, and we should see that that's been invoked. That's now been successfully renamed. So we go to our step functions. Let's go back up here and have a look at executions. 
and have a look. Yes, indeed, already we have an execution of our step function running right here. So we should now have a job that's already been passed to transcribe. This is going to take a little while to do, so I'm not going to wait for that. Um, but it'll now step through all of the steps in this step function, and it'll light them up green as it uh, progresses through. But it's going to take longer than we've got in this presentation. So um, I'm just going to go back to here, go into the output bucket. And we'll find a video which I did earlier um, is already sat in here. So let's go and take a look at what the output video looks like. Most, 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 and here it is. Let's have a listen. Most, 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 the most, the most, most, most. So there you go. So most, 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 most. That's obviously the most used adjective in the 2019 keynote with Andy Jasse there. Okay, so I thought that was kind of funny. It kind of worked. So. What could you actually use this for? Well, clearly, this is an amazing video. I don't know why you'd want to do anything different to that. But in reality, there are some real world practical applications for this. Imagine if you've got recorded meetings. If you've got recorded meetings and you want to uh, convert that Lambda function to do something slightly different, pull out the uh, questions that were asked at the end of the meeting. We could use this for media monitoring. And how about this? We could create a, an editing, video editing word processor. Say, I want all of these words and I want to glue those together in an output video. That's something fun that we could do with this technology as well. I said before at the beginning of the video that I deal with machine learning and I help people learn machine learning predominantly. And right now I'm helping people to pass the AWS machine learning specialty certification. It's an amazing certification to get and it's an amazing subject area to be in. Now, the course that I've put together includes um, actually going from no knowledge about machine learning at all through what machine learning is, the different algorithms that we use in machine learning, and the different types of machine learning and different types of algorithms, all the way through to actually building our own algorithms, building our own machine learning models, and actually getting hands-on with machine learning inside of a build environment that we build hands-on in the actual course. So it's very in-depth and it's very hands-on, and I'm having a lot of fun putting this together. It's in early access now, so it's still being made. Now is the time to jump in and make sure that the course delivers what you want to see. So go and take a look, and please do connect with me on LinkedIn as well. That's where I talk a lot about machine learning and projects like this, and we have fun there too. So if you would connect with me over there, I'd love to see it. And I'm now going to be available, with any luck, to answer questions, if you have them, about the presentation that I've put together for you today.